Um, the next speaker is Stan Aplustel. And I just want to remind you that Bill and I organized this meeting with Sheng Dong Wang and Stan. So Stan's one of the meeting organizers. And Stan's going to talk about macrofloral biostratigraphy in Europe, focusing on the Moscovian Casimovian uh, transition. Stan? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Spencer, for introducing me and introducing the topic of my talk. And uh, hello to everybody, wherever you are. And uh, I would like to ask another, another slide, please. Okay. Uh, the Carboniferous is the first period in the geological history when terrestrial vegetation became widespread, diverse, and abundant. And a rich plant fossil record has proved to be an effective uh, biostratigraphic tool for intra and interbasinal correlations. Uh, it is also known that uh, there is a strong climatic zonation and four floral realm exists. And uh, this uh, contribution is focused on equatorial Pangaea, its flora, especially in its uh, eastern part, which is now a region of uh, Europe. Please, uh, another slide. Yeah, here in Europe, uh, the systematic collecting of uh, plant fossils and the precise documentation of the stratigraphic position together with associated faunas simply paved the way uh, for its use uh, in biostratigraphy. Uh, the first attempts date back uh, to the late uh, 19th century, but there is a progress in the first half of the 20th century, and uh, this effort uh, graduated uh, or graded, uh, in fact, in uh, the second half of the 20th century. Uh, parallel with this effort, there is also a concept of development of uh, regional West European stages and substages. Uh, initiated by Youngmans, Gotan, and other palobotanists of the time. And uh, it should be also noted that uh, macrofloral biostratigraphy currently used uh, in Europe is based on wetland plants, uh, on preserved mostly as uh, compression, uh, qualified compression in mudstones, accompanying cosy, which are principally the main taphonomic windows. Next slide, please. Yes. The currently used macrofloral zonation is uh, principally that one published uh, by Wagner in uh, 1984. It was updated and the last update is, if I remember, 2010. In original paper, Wagner defined 16 assemblage zones reflecting dynamics of carboniferous vegetation changes. And uh, he, however, also tended to delineate the zonal boundaries at stage and substage boundaries uh, in the European regional chronostratigraphy. And uh, as a result, the zones uh, did not always reflect the dynamic changes in the vegetation. And uh, this is the reason why Chris Cleal uh, in early 90s uh, split some zones to subzones to better reflect some of um, intervals recognized already in 30s by Dix. Uh, in the succession of uh, southwest coal field uh, on British Isles. Typically, these uh, uh, zonations of uh, Bob Wagner and Chris Cleo are not radiosotopically calibrated uh, simply because no reliable data have been available in that time. Next slide, please. Uh, the latest overview of macrofloral biostratigraphy in Europe uh, is that from early this year, but it is only a further modification of uh, Wagner concept. And uh, with Chris Cleal, we, uh, in this uh, overview, provided or uh, suggested 15 assemblage zones, uh, 11 for Pennsylvania, and the average duration of them is 2.2 uh, million years. And uh, the main difference uh, comparing to the original scheme is not only in uh, some nomenclatorical upgrade uh, of zones, but especially in an effort to plot uh, all of these zones uh, against the time scale, uh, because there is an increasing number in the last decade uh, in presence of uh, radiosotopic ages, which are uh, good enough uh, to do this calibration and uh, in areas where, uh, where these macrofloral zones uh, were defined, uh, we could uh, calibrate them and uh, simply do this plotting, uh, the result of which you can see here. Uh, next slide, please. 
concerning the resolution of uh, macrofloral zones, uh, these are, I think, fully comparable with other available zones uh, uh, based on uh, freshwater floor, freshwater fauna, or uh, simply terrestrial fauna zones. Uh, the duration is something like one and a half to two and a half million years. Uh, so uh, these are fully uh, compatible. Next slide, please. And uh, now uh, let's go uh, quickly through uh, zones in different parts of Carboniferous. Let's start with uh, Tournaisian and Vizian stages and their zones. Basically, there are two of them in our uh, proposal or in our uh, overview. And uh, they are so long that uh, they have no practical impo importance because simply uh, they are defined in dominantly marine successions with marine faunas and marine biozones. And uh, simply they are not um, able to compete uh, with uh, much la larger resolution of, uh, of uh, other zones in this interval. So uh, next slide, please. Situation improves in Serpukovian, where we have three zones and uh, two youngest Kalimopeka zones, uh, Bleginopteris, in fact, uh, are of the same duration like uh, most zones in Pennsylvania. Uh, so they are commonly used and uh, best developed this interval is in Upper Silesia, but also in Belgium, Midland Valley of Scotland and elsewhere in Europe. Uh, probably really the best record is Suikilometrisic uh, Colbering Parallax Succession in Upper Silesia, which is now radioisotopically calibrated. Uh, there is a uh, cyclostratigraphic model based on short eccentricity and floral succession is simply well described. Next slide, please. Uh, Bashkirian to early Moscovian zones are uh, Parallel zones uh, of classical uh, major European coal fields with parallel succession uh, data on flora are combined with uh, data on fauna. Zones correspond to substages uh, and are bounded by marine bands, which is perfect for identification across large areas. So the zones are principally isochronous. And uh, in addition, marine bands uh, proved differences in the first and last occurrences of important taxa among individual coal fields of uh, North Variscan Poland. But uh, there is certain, or there might be a certain uh, 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 level of uncertainty when we extrapolate uh, these zones to continental basins. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide uh, shows you uh, differences in uh, uh, ranges of uh, selected species in variscan basins. And uh, you can see differences in the first or last occurrence uh, 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 referred to marine bands indicated by these blue lines. And uh, in some cases, uh, differences are to several cyclo themes and uh, could be. Uh, the delay, for example, in appearance of some taxa could be uh, longer uh, than one million year. Next slide, please. Yeah, concerning uh, late uh, middle Pennsylvanian to late Pennsylvanian, Pennsylvanian macrofloral zones, these are purely terrestrial because since late Bolsovian, uh, there are no marine bands in European coal fields. Um, except the Donets, of course, and uh, partly also uh, northwest Spain. Uh, so principally Asturian and uh, younger substages are defined purely on macroflora in states like France and northwest Spain especially. And uh, the absence of marine bands uh, does not make it possible to capture differences in the stratigraphic range of important taxa. So the biozones identified in different basins may not correspond exactly in time. Uh, which uh, I try to demonstrate on next slides. Next one, please. Yes, uh, this is the base of uh, Lobatopteris Vastita zone, uh, which covers middle to late Asturian. And uh, the base uh, was identified in several coal fields. A uh, few of them are depicted here. And uh, what you should note or what you can note is a different pattern in occurrences uh, or first occurrences of stratigraphically important taxa. Uh, this varies evidently among coal fields and uh, 
the boundary uh, located uh, at the blue line uh, simply uh, may raise the question whether this uh, base of the uh, zone as identified in these coal fields represents really a timeline. It means the same uh, uh, spot uh, on time axis. Next slide, please. The same is in the case of Odontopteris cantabrica zone, which is uh, next one above uh, the previous. Uh, uh, all right, uh, they're yes. almost done. Oh, okay. So yeah. I can. Sorry, and uh, we can because here uh, at the base of the zone there are even more subtle changes uh, in flora. Uh, it is usually complicated or difficult to uh, identify the base of the zone in European coal fields. Chris Creel uh, uh, suggested uh, this correlation of the base of the zone. And again, we can ask whether the, uh, uh, this uh, horizon among coal fields is uh, really isochronous, if it is a timeline. Please, uh, next slide. And uh, new radioisotopic ages uh, from uh, several coal fields suggest that uh, it is uh, not the case. And uh, these zones are uh, diachronous to a certain extent. We have uh, now quite uh, nice data from the Donetsk Basin, from the Czech Republic basins, and from Northwest Spain. And uh, if we compare ranges of uh, macrofloral zones, there are differences uh, over a distance of uh, several thousand kilometers, for example, between Spain and uh, Eastern Ukraine. And uh, these differences are usually in a scale of kilo years, but in some cases uh, uh, may be even longer, as it seems now, and, uh, than two million years. It means that uh, based on criteria upon which uh, in these basins, uh, for example, the Cantabrian is identified. Uh, it means that, uh, for example, Czech Cantabrian uh, and Spanish Cantabrian do not represent uh, exactly the same interval on time axis. There is, of course, uh, substantial overlap, uh, but uh, not 100% uh, fit. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the rest of my talk, I would like to focus on uh, changes of flora uh, in eastern part of tropical Pangaea. Uh, but uh, I would like to start with paleogeography. So uh, just to remember uh, the situation, because uh, in previous talks, mostly global paleogeography was, uh, uh, was depicted in the slides. So here is a detail of uh, Variscan origin. Uh, what is now Central and Western Europe, uh, which is sandwiched between Laurusia and uh, northern edge of uh, Gondwana. Uh, it's simply uh, a result of amalgamation of not only these big continents, but also of uh, various uh, terrains uh, sandwiched in between. Uh, it is also the reason why the origin is uh, quite wide and uh, hosts a number of basins, uh, the deposition in which uh, started uh, after major collision processes were terminated. Uh, the peak of orogeny in Central Europe uh, falls to Tunisian or early Byzantine, uh, and uh, in Pennsylvanian time it was over and uh, simply origin was collapsed and hosted a number of continental basins. Uh, further north and south, uh, origin is bounded by fallen basins. Uh, north Variscan fallen hosts uh, the major uh, and classical European coal fields, and uh, the southern uh, Variscan fallen basin hosts Asturian basin, as already mentioned, uh, for example, in a discussion by John Knight and, and so on. Uh, so, uh, this, is, this is a principal uh, paleogeographic palo configuration, and uh, we now can approach uh, to the next slide. Okay, uh, if we uh, uh, check uh, sedimentary record of uh, these basins, uh, we see that it is most complete in uh, uh, North Variscan Foreland, or generally in a uh, Foreland basins. Uh, where the deposition started already in Mississippi, early Mississippian or even Devonian, continued without 
tectonic disruption and tectonically induced gaps uh, till approximately the critical interval of uh, Moscovian Kasimovian transition, where uh, the first tectonically induced gaps uh, appear. Uh, the same situation is uh, in basins uh, of eastern uh, uh, continuation of uh, North Variscan foreland uh, under numbers 9 to, to 12, uh, where even more gaps uh, used by tectonic events uh, is involved. And continental basins number 5 uh, to uh, 8 principally uh, are full of gaps and there are just uh, few deposition events uh, separated by usually two, three million years lasting uh, uh, gaps related to various uh, tectonic uh, phases. So uh, if we focus uh, on the critical interval uh, depicted in a red rectangle, we see that continuous deposition is only in the Donetsk Basin probably and uh, in all other coal fields uh, simply uh, there is something missing. And if there are sediments, uh, they are recorded as uh, coal bearing strata or uh, partly, especially in uh, on British Isles, but also in the rural area and elsewhere. Uh, there are sick piles of red beds uh, with completely poor fossil record. And if something is found at all, uh, it is usually completely different flora from uh, those, uh, from that one accompanying uh, coal seams. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, I prepared this uh, slide to, to, to introduce uh, changes uh, era, uh, around the Moscovian Kasimovian boundary, but I think uh, Cortland uh, did it for uh, palinofloras, and uh, in some previous talks we heard about uh, uh, macroflora. So I just would like to, to, to stress uh, the bottom part uh, or the bottom paragraph where these changes are generally, of course, believed to be driven by climate, but there are also some uh, other opinions that uh, this process was initiated by Variscan orogeny, as already we heard uh, during this uh, workshop, uh, which increased clustic load, improved drainage, declined, um, which declined the extent of coal forest uh, in the North Variscan Poland, which were the further enhanced uh, evaporation from this region and uh, promoted aridification trend and, and so on. Uh, however, it is, uh, next slide please, uh, we will focus now on uh, floral changes uh, in some basins uh, because those on British Isles uh, and for example in uh, Dobruja in Bulgaria have been published recently uh, by Chris Cleel uh, I selected uh, the intrasuretic basin as a representative, uh, which is a continental basin along Czech-Polish border. Uh, we have uh, a number of data uh, from boreholes, which are stratigraphically well located, and these data uh, are related to palynology and uh, macroflora. Uh, you can see on uh, your left, in this uh, left-hand side column, uh, basin uh, lithostratigraphy. Uh, gray intervals simply mean uh, coal bearing strata or lacustrine horizons and something like uh, red or brown color indicate the uh, presence of red beds. Uh, if there is uh, none of these colors, it's a gap in the position because this stratigraphy is plotted against the time axis. Uh, concerning uh, palynological and macrofloral data, uh, in this slide they express a number of species. So. There are something like expression of uh, diversity. Just know that uh, the scale for palynology is uh, different for, uh, from uh, that for macroflora, and diversity of palynological data is much, much higher. Uh, if we compare both uh, type of records, we can uh, generally see in terms of increasing or decreasing diversity, uh, similar uh, trends uh, principally. Uh, the main diversity or the highest diversity is related uh, uh, to coal bearing intervals or to lacustrine horizons in uh, uh, Permian strata and uh, the lowest diversity is in case of red beds. It should be noted that uh, in uh, case of palynological data uh, uh, diversity 
uh, interpreted for uh, red dead horizons is uh, in fact uh, interpolation between call windows between uh, taphonomic uh, horizons and uh, bracketing this uh, this uh, red beds uh, intervals so uh, we have no palynological data from red beds themselves so uh, they reflect only relatively long ranging taxa uh, continuing from one window, uh, one call, gap, call interval to uh, another call interval. In case of macroflora, uh, we have, uh, it is a mixture of uh, what have been found in red beds, uh, some uh, fossil remains and uh, of uh, interpolation between uh, taphonomic windows. Uh, if uh, we, for example, check uh, the spores produced by uh, lycopsids, uh, we see that uh, the diversity uh, rises up to Dacmantian when it reaches maximum, and uh, approximately the same level is maintained through several gaps and red bed intervals uh, up to taphonomic windows or call intervals in early Casimovian and early Gelian age. Then uh, in uh, late Gelian, there is a uh, drop in diversity. Concerning ferns, uh, uh, we can see increase in diversity from uh, latest Namurian to uh, Dacmantian when the maximum is nearly reached. Uh, uh, then in Bolsovian up to uh, early Gelian, uh, diversity is relatively very high or among other groups, it is the highest and uh, approximately without any prominent uh, change. Uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we evaluate this group as a whole and do not distinguish between, for example, leptosporangiate or sporangiate ferns and, and so on. Uh, if we uh, have a look at the macroflora record, there is a slightly different situation. Uh, lycopsids uh, are uh, reaching the main or the highest diversity uh, already in uh, Namurian, Lanxetian, up to early Bolsovian, uh, which is in agreement uh, with what is known from Colbos in North America, for example. And uh, then uh, there is a drop uh, in uh, middle Bolsovian and uh, temporary increase in diversity in coal windows of late uh, Pennsylvanian age. Uh, it should be noted that uh, uh, in red beds, the diversity of lycopsid is uh, very low. So it means uh, that uh, increase in diversity in uh, late uh, Pennsylvanian coal windows uh, uh, is thanks to completely new species which appear and are typical just for these particular intervals and differ from those in, for example, Westphalian. Yeah, and uh, if uh, I should characterize the dominancy or the vegetation of uh, basin lowland uh, in terms of uh, uh, dominancy of plant groups, simply uh, the Westphalian as a whole, uh, or Westphalian, Westphalian till uh, till uh, Bolsovian, early Bolsovian, simply the uh, basin lowland was. Uh, dominated uh, by arborescent lycopsids, uh, including uh, lepidodendrids and sigillarians. Uh, of course, with uh, other groups, pteridosperms were very diverse, uh, ferns, especially leptosporangate ferns. And concerning uh, red bed interval in Asturian, where we have another record, uh, uh, vegetation was completely different. Uh, in the um, uh, fossil record of red beds, which is really very poor, we have uh, the first uh, remains of conifers and uh, dominating are cordite means uh, with some uh, minor contribution of uh, okay uh, with minor contribution of uh, uh, wetland plants so it was something like uh, cordite lean valchian uh, corifer dominated forest and uh, it is this pattern is maintained till the end of uh, carboniferous and in coal windows uh, we have wetland assemblages dominated by tree ferns uh, with uh, medulose aliens uh, but also with calamites some cordite aliens uh, and there appear also lepidodendrid lycopsids sigillarians uh, but they are not common next slide please here we have uh, even more detailed view 
Uh, what uh, we can see here is uh, our quantified analysis of uh, spores isolated, just Lycospora and tree fan spores. And uh, we can see that uh, the major abundance of Lycospora is uh, from Namurian to Dacmantian, uh, where they reach about 30 to 60 percent. And uh, in cold windows uh, of uh, late Pennsylvanian age, uh, their amount is uh, much lower and generally between something like 10 to 15 percent. In tree ferns, uh, spores, uh, uh, the situation is different. Uh, they are really uh, poorly recorded in Lanxetian, but become uh, quite rich in Dacmantian, where the normal concentration is uh, between 10 to even 30 percent. And uh, this trend uh, still uh, increases in uh, uh, late Pennsylvanian coal windows where we have quantified data and the uh, content of tree, spore, uh, tree fence spores uh, in palynological record is between 20 30 percent normally. Next slide, please. But if we move uh, some 200 kilometers away from the intrasuretic basin to central part of the Czech Republic, uh, we have here Kladno Rakovník basin uh, with several cold bearing interval in uh, late Pennsylvania and uh, those in uh, Lobergelian, uh, which is called Cone of Coal show a uh, quite prominent uh, content of uh, Lycospora in some samples, which varies between something like 20 to 50 percent. And even the youngest coal, which even was locally mined, uh, is of upper Gellian age, and uh, the age is constrained by uh, radiotopic uh, age. And this coal is simply located at the CP boundary. Uh, content of Lycospora spores in some samples uh, uh, is uh, uh, over 80 percent, uh, which is quite surprising because in roof shell flora of both skulls, lower gelian and upper gelian, uh, lepidodendrid lycopsid remains uh, are rare or even very rare uh, and uh, dominating uh, are calamides and fern foliage. Next slide, please. So if I have still time, just sum up, uh, currently used macrofloral zones are assembly zones based on changes on clastic wetland flora and mostly correspond to regional substages. Bashkirian to Verl Moscovian macrofloral zones in parallel basins of the Variscan forland mostly follow marine bands, are isochronous over a large area, uh, except maybe the extrapolation to continental basins there, the uncertainty is uh, high, of course. Late Moscovian to Gelian biozones like the marine bands and the right in ranges of plant species. Uh, differences in stratigraphic ranges may, however, result in different stratigraphic ranges of biozones in uh, some cool fields. And it is uh, partly indicated uh, by available radioisotopic uh, data. Moscovian uh, to Kasimovian transition is uh, disrupted in most coal fields of Europe by tectonic events and not continuously recorded. There are a number of gaps. And if uh, succession is preserved, it is either coal bearing uh, and rich in fossils uh, in that case, or fossil poor uh, red beds. Decline, although not complete, disappearance of arbolids and lycopsids uh, and their replacement by tree ferns and peridospems peaked around the middle Asturian. And uh, since Asturian to Gelian, uh, we can uh, see alternation of uh, cool barren red beds, which are poor in fossil record, and we found something dominated by gymnosperms, mostly codaitalines and conifers. Uh, and these rabbits alternate uh, with uh, usually similar coal bearing uh, windows uh, with uh, roof shell flora rich in tree ferns and pteridosperms. That basically all. Next slide, please. And finally, I would like to thank uh, Bob Wagner and Chris Creel, who most contributed to the current use macrofloral uh, zonation and to the organizers uh, of uh, this great workshop uh, for inviting me. Thank you for attention.
Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Um, excellent talk. Um, questions, comments? Um, John Knight, you're muted, John. Okay, you're okay. Uh, okay, I'll come back on now. Uh, but, uh, uh, Stan, great. Thanks very much. You've uh, set the tone and uh, very comprehensive. Thank you very much. I thought you might like to uh, me to sort of throw in uh, one or two additional uh, data that I can uh, contribute to what you've said today. Uh, I noticed on one of your slides, you put a very firm line uh, for the uh, top of the, uh, or the base of the Barrelian, the Stephanian A and top of Cantabrian is 305 million years. Uh, I, I will, uh, in my very brief contribution later, flash up a slide, and I'm sure our moderator won't allow me to dwell on it, but on it uh, will be a new aid dating, radiometric dating, of a, a Tonstein from the Peña Corba beds within a, tens of meters of the top of the Cantabrian in its type section. So, uh, or rather, I should say, the the base of the Barwellian, which defines the top of the Cantabrian. And uh, that uh, I had to uh, sacrifice the one specimen that Professor Burroughs with Bob Wagner back in the 1970s collected from the tip of the Peña Corba beds. There was, wasn't doing any good stood on in my, uh, in, in my shelves. So uh, we uh, sent it to uh, Vancouver, the University of British Columbia, and we got a, a, a date, uh, CA Tim's, a, a chemical aberration, of 305.02, plus or minus 0 0.5. So uh, I've been working on the basis that the Cantabrian Barrelian contact is exactly as you say, but on the stratotype. So 305 million years. Uh, and a final uh, point, if I may, just to add on our comments on what happens to lycopsids. Uh, it's worth remembering that in the Massif Centrale of France, uh, Dubonger in particular made a strong point of how strongly represented the lycopsids were in the classic uh, the, the flora of Stephanian A, the one flora that is held up as defining Stephanian A, the Reef de Gier beds. Uh, and, uh, very strong at that point, in other words, what we would now call the Barwellian. Uh, and, uh, but interestingly, it disappears, at the almost total disappearance of the lycopsids, uh, into the next stage, Stephanium B, although that is a tectonic separation. So uh, I would just add that the presence of the lycopsids is very enigmatic in the intramontane basins. Uh, but I think, uh, I hope, that confirms the point you've been making. Thanks very much. Okay, uh, if I can respond, John, thank you for uh, your comment. Uh, to the first half of your comment uh, concerning radiosotopic ages, uh, of course, uh, we need uh, more such data as you suggested, and uh, we can refine uh, the ranges of uh, these macrofloral zones and of course of other biozones if there are some defined. Uh, so, uh, this is independent tool on biostratigraphy. And it is very important that we have uh, another control uh, we can uh, simply implement uh, into this scheme. So uh, I'm looking forward if there are some data. I used uh, your new paper with uh, Carmen, you published uh, this year. So uh, if I did not meet a type mistake, uh, so uh, it is uh, as you published. And uh, concerning uh, lycopsids, yes, uh, it is very different. Uh, normally, as you saw in the presentation, uh, lycospores are very common in uh, coals uh, in uh, European coal fields, especially in intermontane basins, uh, but also in um, some uh, which are situated in uh, Barisken Forland, uh, like in uh, Northwest Spain. And uh, simply, uh, it's place from place and um, maybe partly also biased uh, by sampling, difficult to say. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, 
in uh, Europe, uh, lycopsis definitely goes uh, to the latest gelian. And uh, we have lyco lycospora even in uh, uh, autunian or in acelian uh, strata, sharp, and uh, uh, unfortunately no uh, uh, macro remains. So uh, although lycospora is uh, very rare or relatively rare in, uh, in uh, early Permian, it occurs, uh, it is known also from autumn basin in France, but uh, I don't remember reporting any plant remain except uh, one uh, paper of Niemates uh, from uh, one of our continental basins in Czech Republic. He found uh, leaves uh, which resemble those of uh, Sigillaria or maybe Lepidodendrids. So uh, that's answer to this comment. Okay, um, thank you. Jonathan Wilson has a question for you, Stan, please. Mm -hmm. Hi, Stan. Th thanks for thanks for a great talk. Um, and I'm just reflecting on what you presented um, uh, after uh, Sandra and Cortland's uh, excellent talks as well. And you point out something that I, I just would um, be interested in your comments on it, is that from the Asturian to the to the Jellian, how similar are the wet and dry floras that you see to one another? Um, could you comment on that? Do you see a similar pattern that's seen in Western Pangaea where we have similar floras? recurring over time as you get these intervals sort of waxing and waning? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, concerning uh, dry flora, which is recorded in very beds and uh, is principally very poor, uh, we uh, see increase in uh, conifers through the late Pennsylvanian. So uh, these, uh, I mentioned uh, late Asturian red beds uh, have only a few remains and uh, in uh, uh, coal windows of that age, uh, you have uh, no associated uh, uh, conifer remains with wetland floras. But in uh, Saverian, which is somewhere in the middle of Stephanian or middle of late Pennsylvanian, uh, you can find uh, conifer remains uh, nearly associated uh, with uh, mudstones bearing wetland uh, um, flora. Uh, compressions of petland flora, and uh, they are they are not exactly in the same bedding planes, but uh, very close to it. Uh, if you go even to late Gelian, um, conifers become uh, even more common. Uh, we have peltasperms and uh, and so on as well. Uh, diversity of uh, conifers increases in early Permian. Uh, in general, concerning petland uh, flora. Uh, basically, uh, or yeah, flora which is recorded in taphonomic windows in uh, cold intervals or in uh, lacustrine sediments, uh, simply as I suggested, uh, um, uh, since uh, Casimovian uh, definitely it is dominated by uh, tree ferns, uh, calamites, and pteridosperms, uh, but. Um, uh, uh, we have uh, these remains of lycopsids, uh, which are generally very rare. What is uh, quite interesting uh, um, that we have uh, in some lacustrine horizons of uh, late Gelian age, uh, we have uh, flora, which is a mixture of uh, uh, dryland or drought tolerant flora and wetland flora, uh, for example. Uh, in that call, uh, I uh, reported or mentioned uh, because of uh, lycospora, uh, we have uh, in the last months above it uh, uh, a mixture of uh, conifers and uh, lepidodendrids uh, on the same bedding planes. Yeah, so uh, it's quite interesting, I think. <laughs> 